Greetings, friends, and welcome to Right Side, your nutrition program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being into addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years, over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls at 844-236-6010. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, if you have questions about the longevity products or formulations, or if you want to wean yourself off your meds or a loved one off their meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We're going to have a guest, a couple of guests at the bottom of the hour, Eric Langsher and Nate Klemp authors of of a really interesting book on emotional and mental fitness called Start Here, Master the Lifelong Habit of Well-Being. Really, really interesting book. We'll have uh, Dr. Klemp and Eric Langsher on at the bottom of the hour. So we'll take your calls in our next segment, 844-236-6010. Try to call in early and we'll get to as many calls as we possibly can at 844-236-6010. If you are interested in checking out the longevity products or purchasing any of the longevity products, if you want to make an investment in your health, and if you want to make an investment in a business, please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to my website, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can order products right off the sites, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team and start yourself a longevity business and help spread the word about how important and powerful a good nutritional supplement program can be. You can help change lives. You can make money at the same time. All for a one-time $25 investment. Of course, you can also just get your products at the wholesale price if that's all you want to do. 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team. Or go to my website, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. Okay. So we have been talking about the idea of calming the body down, the single most important step to take if we are, if we're number one, if we're dealing with disease, especially if we're dealing with multiple health challenges that seem overwhelming, and so many of us are, I get all kinds of letters, people dealing with high blood pressure and liver problems and bone problems and skin problems, this is the same, sometimes the same person dealing with all of these kinds of health challenges. It could be overwhelming Try to figure out where to go first. Well, where you go first is, is by approaching the entire system, the entire body. You don't go for the specific structures and systems and organs that are breaking down and are failing us. We go for the body as a system. And number one, that means conserving our energy resources so the body can heal itself. That's really what it's about. You want the body to heal itself. There's no doctor that can do it. There's no pharmacist that can do it. There's no, nobody that can do it, but the body can do it, but it needs energy to do its work. And energy comes from, cons- energy is improved, energy levels are improved by conserving resources. Calming the body down allows us to conserve our energy, conserve our energy resources. And at the end of the day, no matter how healthy we are or not healthy we are, depends on our energy. It's all about energy, calming the body down. Number two, you don't have to be diseased to experience the benefits of calming the body down, even if you're healthy. Calming the body down, activating the parasympathetic nervous system, paying attention to our world. This is one of the, this is an idea called mindfulness, and it's one of the things we're going to be talking about with our guests in our, uh, in the bottom of, uh, at the bottom of the hour paying attention to sounds, paying attention to body rhythms, using our peripheral vision, activating the sides of our eyes. There's so many ways to turn on this 
parasympathetic alpha brainwave state. This is where the body heals and this is where the body relaxes. This is where energy is conserved and built up. Then there's wonderful nutritional supplements that you can use to promote relaxation and a sense of contentment and a sense of well-being. Niacin, vitamin B3, stupendously important for brain health. Niacin was used by Dr. Abram Hoffer back in the 1950s to treat schizophrenia. Niacin can treat social anxiety disorder. One of the signs of niacin deficiency is dementia. Yes, Alzheimer's disease. One of the signs of niacin, de 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 uh, niacin deficiency is Alzheimer's disease. When was the last time anybody got a prescription for niacin, for their brain, for Alzheimer's, for cognitive functioning, for memory? Yet we know taking niacin out of the diet causes pellagra, and one of the signs of pellagra is dementia. And you don't have to have full-blown dementia or full-blown full -blown pellagra to be suffering from a niacin deficiency. You may just have memory problems and you may just think it's just you're forgetful or it's just part of the, the aging th process. By the way, niacin also is important for blood sugar control. We got one supplement for blood sugar control and for the brain. And how interesting is it that brain health issues in many ways are blood sugar issues? Can you see how this whole thing comes together, folks? And it's not that difficult. Niacin for blood sugar, niacin for the brain. Blood sugar is involved in brain health. Niacin is involved in brain health. What does it say? Get on the ultimate niacin if you're dealing with uh, brain health issues. Niacin can also have a relaxing effect because it helps the body. Uh, it comes from, uh, or it's associated with, tryptophan and serotonin. Niacin is actually made from the amino acid tryptophan. When we take niacin, the tryptophan can be converted into uh, serotonin, which keeps you content. So by taking niacin, you can spare your tryptophan from making serotonin. All works together, folks. In other words, niacin is like a serotonin reuptake inhibitor functionally. Niacin is nature's Prozac. If you're dealing with any kind of brain health issues, depression, anxiety, get yourself on the ultimate niacin from longevity, 500 milligrams of time to release niacin. GABA, we talked about that yesterday. That's being used as a prescription drug. Pregabalin, Lyrica. Lyrica is used for all kinds of things from, from uh, treating chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia and mental health issues. Why? Because it's GABA. Another one called Neurontin is used as an anti-seizure medicine, but it's also used for pain. It's also used for bipolar disorder. Why? Because it's GABA. Drug versions of GABA, G-A-B-A, GABA. You can get that as a supplement at the health food store. 100 milligrams, take it at night. Glycine, another wonderfully relaxing amino acid. Glycine is also used to make connective tissue, so it fights wrinkles, and it helps relax you. In fact, glycine was used as part of, the, as part of um, a uh, uh, anti-seizure protocol back before we had anti-seizure drugs. They used to use glycine along with the ketogenic diet. So both glycine, GABA, and the ketogenic diet all have a relaxing effect. Niacin, lithium, magnesium, tryptophan. There's a major relationship, as we said yesterday, between the health of the gut and our mood. Probiotics can help. Caloric restriction can also create a sense of well-being. Yes, fasting can create a sense of well-being and caloric restriction. Same with eating. Matter of fact, eating, one of the biggest problems we have with eating, with overeating, is we're trying to hack into our brain chemistry. We're trying to hack into reward. When we eat dopamine, brain chemicals that say, hey, you just, you just won the lottery. Dopamine tells the brain it just won the lottery. Uh, they call it a reward uh, neurotransmitter, a reward chemical. It makes the brain feel rewarded. When we need a little reward, we eat. When we're under duress, we eat. We're hacking into our brain chemistry. This is the, this is the number one issue and, uh, when it comes to overeating, and it's one of the main problems when people try to use supplements and people try to, to uh, uh, use, f not supplements, but uh, formulas for weight loss. Herbal formulas for weight loss, or, or uh, you know, there's all these kinds of, kinds of uh, even nutritional supplements, really, for weight loss. There's all these kinds of strategies, formulaic strategies for weight loss, but they don't really work because we're eating for psychological reasons. We're eating for mental reasons, not necessarily for physiologic reasons. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this on The Bright Side. back on 
on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're going to get the phones here in this segment. Uh, at the bottom of the hour, we got uh, Eric Langshire and Nate Klemp, authors of a really interesting book called Start Here. They call it Life Cross Training. And we're going to be talking, uh, it's based on emotional, mental fitness as well, some scientific kinds of stuff. We're going to talk about uh, how to hack into your brain and your mind so that you can hack into your body. Basically, that's what this book is all about. And uh, we'll be doing that at the bottom of the hour with uh, Dr. Nate Klemp and Eric Langshaw. We'll take your calls to segment 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, please go to truthtreatments.com. If you're dealing with eczema or rashes or you've uh, burnt yourself or sunburn, you want our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. I designed it in my compounding pharmacy for folks who are dealing with post-surgical scarring or to prevent post-surgical scarring. And now it's available to you at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay. Elizabeth in Texas. Good morning. Welcome to the bright side. What's up? Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Two years ago, I was on a low carb diet for six months and lost 60 pounds. They nice. gave me B12 shots once a week, and I took multivitamins and fat burners. Awesome. During the end of the diet, I noticed my feet going numb and excessively cold. My Are you reading me a letter here, Elizabeth? You sound like you're well, reading I don't, I'm nervous. I don't oh, you're forget, sweet. You're sweet. I'm say. kidding you. Go ahead. I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. Go ahead. Go ahead. And um, so my fingers turned blue and white and getting numb. When I reached my go weight, my problem was getting worse. My toes were hurting really bad. So I decided to go to the doctor. So since it's been a year going to several doctors trying to find out why that is happening. Burning in so the toes, my, burning in your extremities. Is that what you're saying? Numbing. Numbing in the extremities. That's what the problem yeah. is? Yes. Okay. All right. Here's your... So here, that's, went, that, you're not... It's I, not uncommon. Not uncommon, ma'am. Okay. It's very well, common, actually. I went back to the doctor <laughs> for blood work. Another doctor, again, because I've been listening to your show, and they've been ta you've been talking about uh, food issues. So I went for a test to get... Um, I see if I was allergic to any foods, and they said no. But they did test my B levels, and my vitamin B1 and my vitamin B12 was high. Okay, so that's silliness. Was so Silly. high that they couldn't even register a number. So, no, ma'am, that's not your problem. Okay, you're not going to have numbness in the toes from high B12. Your body, your body is very careful with how it how it delivers B12. By the way, so I wouldn't worry about that, and I certainly wouldn't worry about thiamine which is water soluble and excreted. So here's the deal though. Your problem is in your blood sugar. It's great that you lost 60 pounds, but the fact that you had all that weight, you were carrying all that weight, tells me that your blood sugar was off. Once the blood sugar is off, then sugar starts to accumulate in the blood and it can create damage to the nerves. Now you probably also have digestive health issues and I wouldn't pay any attention to that allergy test because allergy testing doesn't really work very well. What they do is they test a piece of food in a, in a Petri dish, in a, in a test tube, and then they react to the little food that's in the test tube with a, with a bunch of things and they see if you're allergic to it. But the problem is you're not a test tube, you're a human being. And there's many different factors in your body that are gonna affect how you react to something. You, make, you follow me, ma'am? You can't test yes. it in a test tube. So first things first, uh, and just generally speaking, what's your height to weight? You don't um, have to be specific. Five two and one sixty now, because I thought okay. maybe if I gained some weight, I would go back no. to normal. <laughs> no, sweetheart. No, listen, listen, Elizabeth. You have a blood sugar problem, and the reason this is important is because it's a, it's a red flag for a heart attack, for a metabolic syndrome, for liver disease, for all kinds of problems. Are you with me? This is really yes. important. Your, the the, the uh, numbing in the extremities is a sign that your blood sugar is dramatically off and your body is now starting to break down. You absolutely 100% have to start working on your blood sugar. I'm going to give you a bunch of ways to do it, okay? okay. That you're going to ultimately have to start doing the digestive thing, but for now, you have a serious problem with the blood sugar. Get on the, if, are you doing the longevity products, by the way? Yes, I've been on it for 45 days, just the healthy okay. start pack. Good. Stay on, the, stay on the healthy start pack, sip on the BTT, and put in a bottle of water and sip on it throughout the day. Get on the ultimate niacin. That alone will make a huge difference. Do one of them a day. Take, start taking the Sweeties, two capsules or three capsules after all your meals, and then use the ultimate selenium, maybe 400 micrograms to 600 micrograms. That's four to six capsules every day. Now, there's a lot of other things you could do for blood sugar, a lot. You're probably going to want alpha lipoic acid. I, I'm going to go fast here because I've got some calls, but I don't, want you to, I don't want you to focus so much on supplements because the most important thing is you've got to get the food thing under control. 
All right. So that means okay. you have to you have to have zero tolerance. If you're starting to get neuropathy, which is what that's called, if you're starting to get uh, uh, problems in the extremities, the toes and the fingers, it is absolutely vital that you get the food thing under control. That means you should be having as close to zero tolerance for foods that are simple that break down into simple sugars: bread, rice, potatoes, desserts, soda pop, fruit juice. Um, starchy kinds of foods, burritos, p- pizza. Do you know what I'm saying? Cereals. Yes. Zero tolerance. Now, instead of those foods, you're going to try to get in more protein and more fiber because it's very difficult just to stop eating those foods. But it's much easier if you do protein and fiber, especially protein that contains something called BCAA. BCAA stands for branch chain amino acids, and that's going to be your super high protein foods like whey and dairy and eggs and meat and also uh, also to a certain extent beans if you're if you're a vegetarian or vegan high protein foods and you can also get BCAA supplements at the health food store and you should be also an amino acid called glutamine G L U T A M I N E that's very effective for sugar cravings five milligrams get the powder and do five milligrams every day high protein foods will also get you some glutamine so it's really I, I, there's lots of supplements that, that are important I don't have time to give you all of them but you got a great place to start the most important is to wean yourself away from those carbohydrate foods and into more high protein foods and I'd also be using some coconut oil too that can help wean you off and then last but not least vegetable juices will make it easier for you to resist uh, sugar and sweets and pasta and all those kinds of foods all right, but don't don't worry about the thiamine and the B12. You got bigger fish to fry. Uh, you got to be okay. focusing on your blood sugar, and I'd be doing it right away. Okay, Elizabeth. Okay. All right. Thank take, you. Take care. Have a beautiful day. All right, Laura in Ohio, calling back here. Hey, Laura. Hey, Ben. I, was, I called yesterday. We kind yes. of cut off at the end. You're yes. Miss Type A with the adrenal yes. thing. I remember yes. you. Yes. 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 Hypothyroidism is very common in women. Uh, that's for a couple of reasons, especially type A women. Type, the adrenal glands are your type A glands. So when you're type A, meaning ambitious and workaholic and perfectionist and want to get everything done all at once, that's what type A personalities are, your adrenal glands are bearing the burden. They're doing the heavy lifting there. The second thing is when the adrenal glands are very interesting. In addition to making these emergency hormones, the adrenal glands also make female hormones and reproductive hormones. So when there's a female uh, ovarian issue or, or a uterine issue, especially as a woman gets older and you don't have to be old. I think you said you're 32. Did you say Laura? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you don't have to be getting older in order to get into that, uh, getting old. You don't have to be old to get into the, be into the getting older stage. Even 32 is getting older. And so the adrenal glands will bear more and more of the slack, although you're accelerated, I would tell you. And that's kind of concerning. So, uh, any problems with your menstrual cycle, by the way, any period problems, anything like that? Um, not, not really. No, there's no, not really. It's yes or no. (laughs) Not really means yes. I'm, I'm regular. I don't. Okay. Heavy, painful, dysmenorrhea. I have have cramps right in the beginning, like the first day. Okay. All right. Well, then it's not significant yet. And hopefully it won't get worse. You got to focus on your adrenal glands, my dear. And I'm, I'm out of time. I got a guest coming up. So I hate to keep putting you off like this. If you want, send me an email to Ben at KSCO.com or call back tomorrow. But we have a, we got to go. We got a guest at the bottom of the hour. I apologize, Laura. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back with uh, Eric Langshire and Nate Clamp right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchive.com. And also, you can check out our blog, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. And also want to encourage you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, including our retinol 5% gel and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream and Truth Balm and Truth Serum. That's at truthtreatments.com. Okay, so I am really psyched to have our guest on. Dr. Nate Klemp is, like me, a Boulderite, except he's a Stanford, Harvard, Princeton Boulderite, uh, former philosophy professor and uh, got a degree in political philosophy. And he and his partner, Eric Langshire, who is not going to be with us, who, who was going to be with us, have come up with a concept they call life cross-training, and it fits in perfectly 
with everything we've been talking, everything we talk about as part of the bright side philosophy and everything we've been talking about, especially about calming the body down, activating the parasympathetic nervous system and alpha waves and mindfulness. And uh, they've got a book called Start Here. Really, really easy to read, accessible, and a very powerful book. Uh, well, I'll, I'll let uh, Dr. Klemp talk about it. Good morning, Dr. Klemp. Good morning, Ben. Thanks so much for having me. Good to talk to you, and thank you so much for this really, really cool book, Life Cross Training. So what the heck is that about? Great question. We came up with the idea of life cross training when we were first starting this journey of, of looking at, essentially, what are the practices you can use to live a better life, to optimize well-being? And the way we got there is through the research we were looking at and also in our own experience, we realized that there was no single practice that was the key to well-being. We hear a lot of talk about meditation. We hear a lot of talk about movement and exercise. But in our experience, it was really a, a series of different practices that all fit together that held the most efficient pathway to well-being. And so I remember it was about four years ago when we first started building the program, we were, we were inspired by programs like P90X and CrossFit in the realm of physical fitness. And we had the thought, that's, that's what we want to create. We want to create a program that's not just about physical fitness, but it's also about mental and emotional fitness based on this idea that you Mr. can do Producer a guy. of different practices. Somebody. All right. Hey, Eric, are you there? I'm not sure if we have a... Uh, yeah, hello. Oh, Eric, you just cut out there, buddy. I'm sorry. Eric? This is Nate. Oh, Nate, I'm sorry. Yeah, you cut out. We, we lost you for about two minutes or about a minute there. So can you start again? I talk about the, well, I don't, I don't know where we left off, but we lost you. So let me just ask you this. What is, sure. the, core, what is the core of life cross training? What is it? What are the, the components, the pieces? Yeah, great question. Basically, there, there are three big ideas running throughout the book Start Here and, and in our program, Life Cross Training. The first is the idea that well-being is a skill that can be trained. Mm. So just like you can train for a marathon or you can train for any other athletic event, well-being and happiness is, is a muscle that you can train and develop. The second key theme is this idea that our experience is really shaped by where we direct our attention. Mm. And many people probably know this to be true just in their own lives. If you direct your attention towards stressors and all the things that are wrong with your mm. life, you tend to experience suffering. And, and the fact is you can change your attention. You can shift your attention. And then finally, what we try to do throughout our program is give people the tools to train these habits and skills in an efficient way where you don't have to you know, quit your job and go for three weeks on a meditation retreat. Mm. You can actually develop this in the midst of your everyday life. I love it. You had one, you had one, uh, have one meditation about waiting in line, which I absolutely hate to do, but because we all right. wait in line so much, if you could leverage the, the, the time you spend waiting in line to perfect yourself or to work on yourself, it seems like a golden opportunity. I love how you did that. And I, and I actually want to talk about that in a second, but first I got a question for you here. And I love this idea that, that you say well-being is a skill well, and a muscle. Well, really, what you're saying is having a good life is a skill, right? Having a good life is a muscle. Exactly. Right? That's, that's yep. a powerful idea right there. But I got a, I got a little – I want to ask you something because this kind of uh, – when I think about you talking about attention and directing your attention, I love the concept. But as a concept, it's powerful. Practically speaking, aren't there addictive drives to where we place our attention? Aren't we hooked on placing our attention to negative things and self-sabotage and the bad stuff? It's easy to say, oh, yeah, place your attention on good stuff. Go to your happy place. But it's not so easy in practice, right? Yeah, I love that question. And, and that was really one of the things we were trying to figure out when we developed this program is how do you redirect your attention? Because most of us, you can kind of say, yeah, I'm going to be more present. Right. But an hour or two later, you're lost in whatever kind of right. bizarre mind wandering you, know, you're, you go to. So what we did in the book is we created a number of different habit forming cues. The idea mm. being that it's impossible to be more present all day, every day, but it is mm. possible to create cues throughout your day. So something mm. like taking a shower, that can become a cue oh, for taking four breaths and being more present. Or 
uh, something like eating a meal can be a cue for gratitude. That's awesome. So our approach is really to create these habit-forming triggers in the midst of everyday life that almost wake you up throughout the day. Hmm. And I think that's really the most effective way to redirect your attention because, hmm. as you said, the mind is just too powerful and, and these ordinary habits are too powerful unless we have some way of interrupting them. You know, that's neat. What you're saying is basically use everyday experiences as anchors, things that you're doing all the time to, to exactly. cue you into certain ways of being, like brushing your teeth or something, something that yeah. you're doing all the time. That's really quite brilliant. So I read this thing once on meditation. What meditation really was, it was by this uh, Buddhist monk, and he said, returning is the meditation. Like when we, when we meditate, we, like you say, our mind goes to different places, but the returning is actually the meditation itself. So I think what you're pointing to is that there's a value in just going back, not staying in the present, but going back to the present, correct? Yeah, and we have a, a catchphrase for that that we use throughout the book, which is notice, shift, rewire. Mm. Noticing is the act of catching yourself when you're lost in thought or lost in some sort of unhealthy pattern. Shifting is exactly what you just said. It's that magic moment mm. where you shift from your mind wandering through stories about the past or the future to mm. what's happening right now or to the experience of gratitude. And then rewire is seeing if you can just stay there and savor mm. it for about 15 mm. seconds to really encode mm. it into, into your neurobiology. Like neurons that fire together, wire together. Ever heard that? That's yeah, same. exactly. And, yeah. and so the idea with that rewire step is that you're, you're taking a moment to really encode those neural pathways. I love it. And actually holding it, like, like exactly. holding the energy there so that actually the brain, the, literally the physiology rewires itself. That's really interesting because there, there's an aspect of it. You're talking about mental stuff and, and sort of abstract stuff, but really there's a phys, there are physiologic correlates to all of this in terms of neurons, in terms of brain chemistry and neurotransmitters, et cetera, correct? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And really what, what it is is we're, we're talking about a way to bring meditation into the midst of everyday life. So mm. you can meditate for 10 minutes in the morning, but then you can actually bring it into your life in various ways. Okay, so meditation's, meditation is a loaded word. I want to talk about that, and then I want to talk about this idea of mindful waiting, and I also want to talk to you about addictions when we come back as well. So hang tight. We're talking to Nate Clamp, author of Start Here, a groundbreaking science-based program for emotional fitness. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Dr. Nate Klempf about his book, Start Here, Master the Lifelong Habit of Well-Being. Uh, book's available on Amazon, I take it. You guys got a website, Dr. Klempf? Yeah, starthere.life and also life-xt.com. And do you do seminars and, and workshops and things? Yeah, we actually have a corporate training program that we deliver to mostly companies in Chicago, but really all over the, the U.S., bringing mindfulness into the workplace. How about to, for the general public? Anything for the general public? Or do you have... Uh, You're actually just about to release a online course to the general public. Awesome. Company. That's about awesome. two weeks away. Uh, there's deal. a free mindfulness course we have on our website, starthere.life. So if you do that, you'll get all the information about the paid course. Okay. So uh, I love you have a couple of really neat meditations that I saw. One, though, really struck me because I hate to wait and I hate rush hour. Yeah. You know, and I always try to work with it, but you came up with this really cool thing you call mindful waiting. First of all, tell us what mindful means. What mindful, I mean, it seems obvious, but what does it mean to you? What does mindfulness mean to you? And then tell us about mindful waiting. Yeah, the way I think about mindfulness <clears throat> is really directing your attention to the present moment non judgmentally. So, in other words, placing your attention on what's happening right here and now, the sights, sounds and sensations of this moment mm. that's mindfulness now when you apply that to something like waiting it gets much more difficult it's pretty easy to be mindful when you're sitting on the beach watching a sunset or you're having a great moment with a friend but waiting stirs up a lot of agitation for most of us why is, me, why is that grocery store and there's a long line, you're looking at the other lines, and if somebody cuts you, you know, yeah, there's all this yeah. kind of emotional drama that happens. What is it about waiting that pushes our buttons? 
Well, I, I think we are now living in a way where we're always on, we're rushing from one thing to the next. Mm. We're trying to, to hurry through life. And so waiting is a pause in that. And it's a, it's a pause we can't control. And, and it's a pause that <clears throat> really interrupts our ordinary habit of busyness. So I think the, the way we thought about this is it's something that's inevitable. You know, it happens when you're at the store. It happens when you're uh, sitting, you know, at a stoplight. <clears throat> but it's, um, it's, it's a great opportunity for really taking a step back and just being in the present moment. Very difficult because there's all this agitation, but if you can take that moment and really just tune into the sounds of the present moment, you'll start to notice a shift in your experience and you'll start to notice all the agitation go away. Now, I wonder if uh, when you talk about agitation I, and uh, waiting, it reminds me of insomnia and trying yeah. to fall asleep. There seems to be a relationship there, no? Waiting, agitation. How would you apply yeah. these ideas to pe for people who can't fall asleep who have insomnia? That's a great question. I definitely have moments where I wake up in the middle of the night and it's difficult to get back to sleep. What I find is in those moments, having some sort of anchor for the mind can be really helpful. So just a simple breath-based meditation can be really helpful in those moments, bringing all of your attention to the sensation of the breath mm. and just watching it go in and out with no attempt to control the breath, just watching the breath and feeling the sensations that arise. It has this effect of taking your mind out of what psychologists call mind wandering, mm -hmm. which is what can really stir up all the stress hormones and you know, anxiety and things like that. Cause you're, when you're mind wandering, you're, you're simply not there in the present moment. You mm -hmm. know, you're, you're 10 years from now, two days mm -hmm. from now, mm -hmm. but you're not here. Mm. I wonder if that's insomnia, if that's what if that's related to insomnia is projecting to the future or, or the past somehow and not being in the present moment. I wonder well, if that's I actually tell you from my own personal experience that it's, it's always that future past. Level. I'm thinking Future. about an email I need to write. Yeah, yeah. It's always something that's separate from Interesting. what's actually happening, which is, you know, here I am, I'm lying in a bed. That's what's okay. happening. Breathing. So what you're, what you're talking about with noticing and mindfulness is really, it's, these are really techniques for being present, for paying attention to what's happening right now. Which is the only thing that's real. Exactly. I mean, when we're in the, in the future past, we're in this illusion world. We're not in the real world. And maybe that's the price we pay for, not being, for living in this dream world, this illusion world, rather than in the real world. The price we well, pay is stress. Yeah, and there's, there's a great study out of Harvard about five years ago where they studied how much time the average person spends in this mind-wandering state. And they found, on average, we spend about 47% of our day lost in thoughts about the past and future. So that was 47. one thing they found. But the really interesting they found is when we're in that state, we're less happy. So they asked people the question when they were mm. mind wandering, how mm. happy are you? And then mm. they asked them when they were present, how happy are you? Oh, how and they found that we're, we're just happier, less stressed yeah. when we're more engaged in the task at hand or yeah. just more engaged in the present moment. The present moment has a perfection to it that the future and past don't. I mean, you can actually, you can't, there's nothing wrong with the present moment, right? In the present moment, there's nothing wrong. It's always the future or the past where something's exactly. messed up. Exactly. There's a certain perfection in the present moment, in, in the so-called now. But ironically, there, you can't really be in the present moment. You're always looking at it backwards, aren't you? Well, I think that there's a way, if, if you're really just tuned in to what's, what's happening in your body or in you know, your environment, the sounds and the sights, I think you can. I think any time you get into the mind and you get into you know, the, uh, the thought stream, then, yeah, you're, you're gone. I mean, anytime you have the thought, I'm in the present moment, mm. yeah, you're probably yeah. not in the present moment. Got but, it. Uh, but if you have that experience that's almost beneath the cognitive level of thinking, then there is something, there's a different dimension there of experience. Okay, so now you're from Boulder, I'm from Boulder, you know, yeah. and, and this is kind of normal for us, right? This, uh, talking this exactly. way. But for a long time, this was considered to be really airy, fairy, Boulder talk, pretty much. But now there are all these, like, Harvard and, and UCLA and, and Yale and all these, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, establishment universities are applying these ideas for lowering blood pressure and for fighting cancer. What do you think? What's happened? How's this, how's this transformation taking place? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think 
20, 30 years ago, this was this kind of out there, fringe, hippie practice. You think right. of Beatles or something. Right. And everything has changed. Now you, you look at major hospitals, you look at the best athletes, the best right. performers, the best musicians, they're all meditating, or many of them are meditating. Mm-hmm. And I think the shift is really the science. So one of the leading researchers, Richard Davidson, who actually wrote the foreword to start here, he really got the, the neuroscience going on this about 20 years ago. And what, what he found through studying people who had never meditated before is that after just four to eight weeks of meditation, not only did they feel better and they reported having less anxiety, but it changed the structure of the brain. And that, mm. I think, was the really radical discovery is that they would mm. do an fMRI before and after, mm-hmm. and they would see this shift in activation yeah. of yeah. the prefrontal cortex from the right to the left-hand side, yeah. which is an important indicator of well-being. So to me, that's the big shift, is that this Detection. is no longer just this subjective phenomenon. We can actually see in yeah. the brain how this changes the brain. Right. Our ability to detect what's happening in the brain has transformed over the last 20 years with MRI and exactly. CAT scans and such. And they can actually see what's happening in the brain in real time. So they can actually see exactly. changes in the brain occurring as they're occurring. And that, I think that's a very good point. That's what's really changed. So you use that word meditation. It's definitely, that's a packed word. And there's all kinds of things people think about when they hear the word meditation. We only have about a minute or two. What's, what does that mean to you? And give us a simple way that we can, quote, meditate, unquote. Yeah, it's true. Meditation can conjure up all sorts of mystical images, but right. it's really simple. And in Start Here, we present a really easy-to-do practice. The basic practice is follow the breath. Bring your attention to the sensation of breathing. And you'll find that it's very difficult to do. Your mind will start wandering. You'll start having thoughts about the future or the past. And in, when that happens, we just use this technique of notice, shift, rewire. Notice that your mind is wandered, shift it back to the breath, and then rewire by staying on the breath. And that's really the essence of the practice. Of course, there are all sorts of other more advanced forms of meditation, but that's where I would start. So you don't need a cushion. You don't need a special cushion. You don't need to have no. special candles and you know all the accoutrements that people think of when they think of meditation. You just do a lying down or sitting down in your chair, right? Yeah. yeah. All you have to have is a chair. You sit down. Try to get your spine as straight as possible. Close your eyes and follow the breath. And that's really the, the essence of the practice. And you can start with, with a manageable goal of five minutes or ten minutes. And if that works for you and you want to do more, that's great. If not... You, you can stay at that amount of time and really experience some amazing benefits. Awesome, Eric. Thank you so much, man. Or Nate, I apologize. We're out of time, Dr. Clem. Thank you so much for your call, for calling in. Uh, the book is Start Here. Dr. Nate Clem, Master the Lifelong Habit of Well-Being. Thanks, buddy. I hope we talk to you again soon. Take care. I'm Pharmacist Ben. It's been awesome. Have yourselves a spectacular, super wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now. 